Okay, today I want to get a custom PC. Since my computer just broke down, let's check out Invader. Hmm, what do they have under promotion? Wow, this specs not bad eh. Not about the price ah. Only got something cheaper. Say no more friend, AMD's got you. Hey guys, welcome back to the Invader PC Studio. Today with us, we have another graphic card from Team Red. This time, AMD's latest Radeon RX 6400. Or not really. So if you guys didn't already know, AMD actually launched this card right here way back in January of this year. Oh, but only to OEMs. But now we finally have it in the DIY and custom market. Now, before we take a quick look at the specs to see whether this card is actually worth considering, why don't we have this GPU unboxed? And now that we're back from our unboxing sequence, let's take a quick look of the spec list of the Radeon RX 6400 right here versus its older brother or not so older brother the rx 6500xc so taking a quick look at the spec list we can see that the 6400 seems to be more of a stripped down version of the 6500xt if you take a look at its both its base and boost clock we can see that in terms of performance it is looking at about 500 megahertz slower in both areas now coming to its ray accelerators and compute units we can see that the trend continues and the 6400 is more or less one quarter less than that of the 6500 XT. So, looking at the 6500 XT itself, right, we, it definitely wasn't the savior, especially in the GPU apocalypse that we were looking for. But now that prices and stock availability of GPUs are stabilizing, where does this actually leave this card? Is this card somewhere in no man's land? What is AMD trying to do? So here are some of what we think is possible. So from its performance itself, what we can infer is that compared to the 6500 XT, performance is about 20 to 30 percent lower, similar to that of the 1650. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a bad card, but one would think if a card like this is available, it would mean that it's more targeting things like the home theater PC market. But funnily enough, Without actual hardware encoding available on this card itself, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Especially if you take a look at its I.O., we can see that it only has one single HDMI and one display port. So if you are thinking to use this as more of a basic system with multi-monitors, this card isn't probably going to be your best bet. So where does this card actually land itself? Honestly speaking, it always goes back to price frankly. So if this card is somewhere in the neighborhood of like, you know, $150 to maybe $200, this card could be a usable card. Is it going to replace the $1650? I don't think so. But it may be another substitute, which is always a good thing. But looking at how pricing will be for this card, it's very critical to see if this card is viable or not. Because if not, I don't think this card is going to fare any better, especially compared to its older brother. And that's it for this video. Before we go, I just want to give a huge shout out to both AMD and ASUS for providing this card for a pre-review teaser of the card before launch. Unfortunately, we weren't able to go down into the nitty gritty of the card's performance due to the schedule. But let us know in the comments down below what you guys thought about this card in particular the pricing, the performance, and especially our skit that we did in the beginning. And if you prefer, you know, a longer kind of video similar to that like we did previously in the 5700X, or if you prefer a shorter term video. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more content like this or like the previous one that we did, or even collaborations that we did 
previously with a few people. I think that's about it for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.